All right, guys, it's another episode of I try to make a copycat recipe, copycat. I try to make a copycat recipe of a dish that we all know and love. Today, I'm going to try and make Cadbury cream eggs. <music> Hey guys, I'm Canastia Jivec and welcome back to my channel. So like I said earlier, my video today is me veganizing the very popular Cadbury cream egg. Easter is just around the corner and I mean, you don't wanna be left out in the Easter chocolatey goodness. So we're gonna make that together. And today's video is sponsored by Herbaland. You guys know about these guys because I talk about them all the time. They make delicious gummy vitamin candies. They're so good if you know, you're know you worried about getting everything that you need I mean, we're all a little all over the place these days and you wanna keep your immune system up and you wanna make sure that you are getting everything that you need on a vegan diet. Definitely check these guys out. They are a Canadian company, they are family owned. They do everything that they can for sustainability and I've been working with them forever. I just love them. So I'll leave a link to them in the description box down below. Stay tuned for a couple giveaways that we're doing with them on my Instagram as well. So definitely make sure that you're following. All right, so for these Cadbury cream eggs, this is a recipe that I created years and years and years ago. 2015, I made this recipe six years ago. And a lot of you guys are new here and you haven't seen it. So I thought that I would revamp it. So for the Cadbury cream eggs, it's actually a really basic, simple recipe. As long as you have the right ingredients, it seems like it's a lot more work than it actually is. So you don't have to make your own chocolate. You can get dairy-free chocolate chips. Whoops. A lot of semi-sweet chocolate chips just happen to be vegan. So you can grab those and we're just going to melt them. Easy peasy. Don't even worry about really tempering it. I mean, you can if you want to. I don't, because who has the time? And then the inside traditionally is made with powdered sugar and corn syrup. Corn syrup kind of turns people off. I mean, it's vegan and you can use it, but I thought because it kind of leaves a weird taste in people's mouths in terms of like it being healthful, I'm going to use brown rice syrup. But if you don't have access to brown rice syrup, corn syrup is fine. Golden syrup, white corn syrup, doesn't matter. And then vanilla. And for the yolk, I'm going to color it with turmeric. So pretty basic stuff. Oh, and shortening. It's almost like a, a frosting, but it's more sugary than buttery, but I'm going to use vegetable shortening. Fun fact, vegetable shortening is accidentally vegan. It's a vegan product. And if you don't, don't want to use shortening because you want to use whatever you have, you have in your house, you can just use vegan butter. Pretty much the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is melt, heat it for 30 seconds, take it out, stir it, heat it for another 30, stir it, and just keep heating it in 30 second intervals until it's melted. But we're going to use a double boiler. All right, for my molds, I mean, you can just go on Amazon or your local cake store, I don't know, do those exist? And just get any sort of like egg mold. You also don't need to, you can just shape them with your hands and throw them into the freezer and then dip them in I don't know, the chocolate that you want. I just find it's actually easier to do it this way. This is just one sheet and I just cut it in half. And I mean, you can do the like full 3D. I just like to do the flat ones. I mean, they're so sweet. As you know, cream eggs are very sweet that I find just having half of an egg is a sweet enough serving size. It's big enough. Silicone ones are also really handy because you can pop them out really, really easily. All right, I like to do this in my stand mixer, but I mean, you can of course do it by hand or with a hand mixer as well. I just prefer the stand mixer because she's pretty and does all my work for me. So starting with the shortening, it's going to go into our stand mixer and then the brown rice syrup. You could probably also do this with agave. I just haven't tried it. All right, I'm just going to cream these together. Now I'm slowly going to add the powdered sugar. So just slowly add that, spoonfuls at a time. Just kind of break it up, move it around. Halfway through adding my sugar, I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla and then just keep going. Again, going in, scraping down the side. So you will need anywhere between two cups and three cups, just depending on how you know thick or thin your shortening or vegan butter is or how sticky or thick your syrup is that you're using. All right, I'm going to add the last couple spoonfuls of the powdered sugar. If your mixture does need a little bit of help, you can add a couple drops of whatever plant milk you like using. I wouldn't add more than like a tablespoon at a time though. Okay, now I'm going to take out about a quarter 
no, a third. Let's go with a third of this. Again, I love ice cream scoops. They're just the easiest way to go about these things. Taking out about that and just putting it into a bowl. Then we are going to color this. This is going to be our yolks. So a little bit of turmeric. And then just mix it again until it's fully combined. All right, just go scrape down the sides again. The yellow isn't quite incorporated in everything. It's still a bit marbled. So just keep going until it, pretty much you want all of this to look exactly like that. And if you find that it's not quite yellow enough, you can add a little bit more turmeric. All right, so I have my melted chocolate and I have my egg molds and I have my pastry brush. And really, we're just gonna do some painting now. I'm going to paint the chocolate into the mold. So I don't want it to be too, too thick, but I also don't want it to be too thin, but it's pretty much just, you know, like painting. You'll, you'll know the thickness when you see it. Nice and steady. If you feel like you're worried about any sort of like bubbles, you can just kind of tap and the bubbles will come up to the surface. And again, you can make these any size that you want. You can make smaller ones, you can make larger ones. I just find these are kind of almost the identical size that they are from the company Cadbury. So that's uh, why I went with them to make them as authentic as I possibly could. That's everything. All right, stick it in your freezer. Okay, so you wanna take your yellow and make a little yolk. I like the yolk to kind of be bigger than the white stuff around it. I just think it looks cute, but it does warm up fairly quickly. So you wanna move quickly and just make your yolks, put it on one of these. You can either do parchment paper or one of these silicone baking mats. The more you handle it, the stickier it's going to get. So try to handle it minimally. With the white, you kind of want to make little discs. And essentially what you're going to do is then roll the yellow into the white and just cover the yellow completely with the white. So let's do like something kind of like this. Just kind of throw it on there. You can do this, of course, put these in the freezer until they've hardened and then do this with the soft white icing, but I just find that when they're both really cold, they're a lot easier to handle. But this way they're already kind of portioned out to be the size that you want. All right, just stick that in your freezer for a few minutes, just so that you can handle it again. I would say probably like 10, 15 ish. And then you can take out your chocolate and just kind of look at it in the light and see if you've missed any spots. You can kind of see exactly where it's a bit thinner and just go in and touch that up and then stick those back. All right, so we have our, they're a bit firmer, little icing bits. We have our egg. Now we can take our little icing bits and just wrap it in the white. Spread it all the way around. And then you can just kind of mold it into the shape that you want and plop it right in there. Push it in. If you have excess, that's okay. I'm just gonna pinch it out of there. Keep it to the side, but then just push it down. And then do that with all of them. All right, now you can take your chocolate, which is going to be a little bit cool. I mean, you don't want it to be like super runny and you don't want it to be hard. You kind of want it like that. At least I find that I can control it more that way. And then you just brush the top. If you have ones that aren't sticking out as much, you can just kind of like drizzle the chocolate on top and scrape off the excess, but these ones are sticking out a little bit more. So with the ones that aren't really sticking out, you can just cover the whole thing in chocolate like that. And just take like a bench scraper and just kind of scrape off the excess. Fill that. These ones aren't kind of sticking up and over, so don't worry about being too perfect. I mean, don't make a huge mess, but definitely fill it. I think covering things in chocolate, though, might be my least favorite thing to do in the world. It's just chocolate is hard to work with. I'm gonna do the same kind of technique where I put a big blob in the middle. On to the next. 